This is really interesting. So you did an article for Dog Pound Daily that kind of gives pro comps uh, for some of the picks. Let's run through a few of them. So Martin Emerson, you say Richard Sherman. Take us through the, the thought with that. Well, on the face, I, it seems like a lofty, you know, comparison. But keep in mind, when Richard Sherman came into the league, he was not a household name. He was a fifth-round pick. Uh, but you look at their length, Sherman's 6'3", Emerson's 6'2", they're both 200 pounds. Emerson's slightly faster, ran a 4.55, five, five. Sherman ran a 4.6. But they're both zone corners. And that's, I think that's what's most important here. Uh, they both have some of the same deficiencies as well. Uh, when open field tackling appears, they'll go low as opposed to wrapping legs. And if they get beat off the line, they both get awful handsy. But in Sherman's case, he stayed handsy so much that eventually the refs just swallowed their whistles. So, you know, I hope Emerson doesn't rely on that and he can refine his technique a little. And he's in a great room to do that. And I think he's in a very good place. But, uh, yeah, my pro comparison for him was – Richard Sherman. So um, Alex Wright, uh, the edge rusher from um, UAB, you say Alden Smith. Take us through that one too. Physical freaks. I mean, just look at the frames on those men. I mean, Wright is six foot five and 271 pounds. And if you look at his frame, he's going to put another five to 10 on in the league. Now, after getting into an NFL strength and conditioning program, he is going to be an absolute monster. Uh, very similar to Alden in that respect. And they both win inside and outside. Tremendous first step. They can beat you right off the ball. But they can also do the dirty work on the inside. Um, they also can come in a little hot and not really throttle down going into sacks. I, but if you think of what's come on the other side with Miles, if when Wright's coming in, I mean, that's just absolute chaos for a quarterback. All right, David Bell, um, wide receiver that they took, uh, you say Jarvis Landry. So fans will understand that comparison. They'll know what you're talking about. Uh, what do you see the similarities there? I start with the frame and the athleticism. The frame, you're looking at Bell, he's six foot. Jarvis is 5'11". I think Bell's like 2'12", and Jarvis was like 2'05", entering the league. And they, tremendous hands. Um, I would say that Jarvis's hands are a full inch bigger than Bell's. But when you watch the tape, Bell doesn't – doesn't drop any balls. I mean, they he get catches with his hands. Um, they don't really win with speed, obviously. It's a lot of technique, a lot of precise route running. And they're both excellent at using their bodies to shield. And they're both sneaky good after the catch. If you miss that first guy misses, they're going to rumble for another 20. You know, they're, they're not easy to bring down in that respect. But I do think that Bell offers more natural outside ability than Jarvis. But just given what the Browns already have, he's going to win over the middle of the field which is good for Deshaun because Deshaun owns the middle of the field. And I think that's going to be a good good link for those two players. It just depends on how quickly they can get off the speed together. Perrion Winfrey, a, a guy that the Browns got much later than anybody thought they would in the comp for him, another guy that Browns fans will remember in Sheldon Richardson. I think you start with they're both JUCO transfers. They both spent two years at a junior college, went to big programs, had tremendous success. Obviously, Richard, Richardson was taken much higher than Winfrey. But Winfrey fell. I thought Winfrey was going to be a late second at, at, at worst. For the Browns to get him a 108, it's kind of silly. But he yeah, has similar athletic, both natural three techs in the NFL. And, you know, they have great motors. I will say this, though. From a personality standpoint, I think Winfrey's comp should have been John Rand. <laughs> After hearing his presser to the media, that, that man is electric, and I hope that energy rubs off on the entire room. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. He will be a fan favorite if he can play like uh, like we think he can. All right, Cade York, uh, the kicker from um, LSU, and you have Steven Gostowski. Uh, if that, I hope you're right because they finally solved their kicker issue there. Well, if you just look at their college metrics, they're very similar, very similar size kickers, both fourth round selections, very consistent. And if you look at and they both kicked over 96 percent from extra points, which is just, that's tremendous. And York was even higher at 97.1, I believe, going 164 of 168 in college. I mean, and for for a kicker, consistency is everything. And they both have absolute cannons attached to their hip. You know, the distance is not a problem. And I think it's funny, too, that it kind of seems like we're chasing what the Bengals did with Evan McPherson by going and getting a kicker who beat Evan McPherson with that 57 yard. Yeah, and, and the ironic thing is that it came out that um, the reports were that the Browns had McPherson slotted in as their sixth-round guy that they were looking at, and the Bengals beat him to him. That might explain why Andrew Berry is like, yeah, we're not, we're not missing out on the kicker we want here, and, and they took him in the fourth. Um,